the U.S. Marshal, um, they announced last week, of course, that they're going to sell the Silk Road Bitcoins, uh, about almost 30,000 Bitcoins, and they're going to divide them up into 10 different blocks for bidders. And they invited interested parties to, um, to contact them and ask for more information um, about the auction. And the people who did email them asking for more info, uh, the U.S. Marshal's Office replied to that email, uh, CC'd all of the recipients instead of BCC'd, uh, the oldest mistake in the book when it comes to email. And now, uh, you know, we know about 40 different names of potential bidders in the Silk Road Bitcoins auction. So, uh, like, a lot of a lot of people are, like, speculating um, about whether these people would actually bid on the coins, what they would do with the Silk Road Bitcoins if they won the auction. Uh, people like Barry Silbert are on the list. Um, Bill, Barry Silbert is the CEO of Second Market, which is um, trying to build, like, a big institutional investors marketplace for Bitcoin. But I... In my opinion, the most interesting part of this story is just the fact that the U.S. Marshal's Office, it, we now know the potential of their stupidity when it comes to technology. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I'm, mean, well, I'm really looking forward now to, to what other mistakes they make uh, when it comes to this auction. I mean... You know, you know how I feel about government. They can't do anything right. They mess absolutely everything up that they touch. But I mean, I kind of feel for whoever accidentally hit the reply all because, I mean, everybody has a story where they've accidentally sent an email out to everyone that they only meant for one person. Yeah. So, I mean, I can kind of understand where he's coming from, but still, like, this is a really huge deal. It's close to 30,000 bitcoins that's like 18 million dollars worth of bitcoins you could be at least somewhat cautious and who knows it could just be you know a, a classic human error or it could be another example of government not doing anything right at all ever yeah i, I mean i think it's both of those like the reason that government is so bad at doing all this stuff that you know they promise the people that they're going to do this awesome stuff. And then when it actually gets down to the, to the bureaucratic mess of implementing policies and in the U S Marshall's case, you know, trying to deal with selling digital currency, uh, that they originally confiscated from an online black market. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's human error. These people don't, they aren't that good with technology. Um, <laughs> They've already messed up with email. <laughs> they don't what? even know how to send an email. <laughs> wow, and, I can't believe um, it's surprising what, even to me. You, um, the only picture of it, the only screen cap of it I saw had the names blacked out. So what are what are some of the biggest names that were on there? You mentioned the CEO of Second Market. What are some of the other names? Yeah, yeah. So um, I didn't recognize most of them actually. Uh, there was a lot of people who like did some independent research to find out like who these people are, you know, digging into their history and stuff. But some of the names that I recognized was, um, okay, yeah, Barry Silbert from Second Market. Another guy from Second Market, um, uh, his his name is Michael um, Michael Meno, Michael Mono or something like that. Uh, he's he also works at Second Market. He's an ex executive. Um, and also uh, the deputy director of public affairs from Yelp uh, was also on the list. But <laughs> originally uh, Coindesk published the article with the whole list of names. And then apparently this guy from Yelp contacted them and asked them to take, to take Yelp's, uh, Yelp's um, company name off there. Because right. it, makes, it gives people the impression that Yelp themselves might be one of the Bitcoins. And then, oh, everyone's speculating is Yelp going to implement Bitcoins into their service yeah. somehow? But no, with this guy from Yelp, like he was just uh, asking about the auction for his personal um, personal use for the Bitcoins, possibly. And that seems to be the case with most of the people on there. Um, there was actually a guy, so just some random guy, um, he posted on the Bitcoin subreddit that his name was actually on the list, but... Uh, you know, he said that he doesn't even have the money to 
uh, cover the $200,000 deposit for the auction. He couldn't even like uh, uh, raise the money to do that. So he's like, you know, I'm just I I just emailed them for information about the auction with no actual intentions or ability to bid for the bitcoins. And you know, it's a big possibility that most of the people on that list were just asking for information. But it is it is pretty interesting, I will say that. Right. Yeah, I mean, regardless of their intentions, if they're actually planning on uh, making a bid or not, uh, this mistake by the U.S. Marshals, they've, it, it's made all of these people targets for yeah, hackers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, they, yeah, most of them uh, might not be uh, even realistically considering bidding on it, but um, they, they've now, it's now been made publicly aware that they at least have an interest in Bitcoin. Yep. And uh, they may be holding some already, and so they're just a target for hackers who are looking to uh, get into unsecured wallets. Yep, and that's what that guy uh, who posted on the on the subreddit, he was talking about, like, now this whole thing has just made me a target for people. People think that I'm rich, and now yeah. they're coming after me just because I inquired about this auction. So, okay, I've got the list right here. Let me, let me read some more uh, people from this list. <laughs> you, you know, we're just delving too deep into their into their privacy but oh well <laughs> it's um, already out there yeah it's already out there for everyone to look at and let me just say again disclaimer um none of these people are necessarily planning to bid on the bitcoins none of them even necessarily have the resources to bid on the bitcoins but these are the people who have expressed interest so we've got Daniel Falkenstein, he's an assistant professor at Rowan University. Barry Silbert, I mentioned. Luther Lowe, P director of public policy for Yelp. Um, Malcolm Oluzwanmani, chairperson of Little Phoenix Investment Group. I, I butchered that name pretty well. And um, Fred Irsam, co-founder of Coinbase. That's pretty interesting. Um... Uh, William Brindice, head investment manager at Digital BTC, so that's a Bitcoin-related company, and then uh, a few other people who don't aren't necessarily in the Bitcoin industry already, but work in um, the investment industry uh, and and venture firms and stuff like that. Then there's one guy. Uh, his name is Shem Booth Spain. He's just an artist and musician. So I mean, there's all kinds of random names on this list. Uh, there's yeah. there's 40 of them total that were leaked, and you know, viewers, if you're curious, you can go look for it yourself to find the whole list. But you know, this is this is one of the most entertaining stories that has come out, in my opinion, um, from from the Bitcoin ecosystem lately. Uh, I'm. I'm psyched. I'm psyched to see what else the U.S. Marshal's Office uh, messes it's, up. It is so ridiculous, man. Like, I I can't believe somebody could be that that careless with eighteen million dollars. <laughs> yeah, it just baffles me. So, I mean, what are what are? Let's talk about some of the possible ways that they can mess up um, the actual sale of the eighteen million dollars worth of bitcoins. <laughs> they could send it to the wrong wallet. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, somebody could hack them. Yeah. Uh, I you, why are people trying to do that already? I I wouldn't be surprised if they're already trying to hack them. I I definitely wouldn't be surprised either. When this whole thing started last week, we talked about this last week. Uh, when somebody noticed the transaction on uh block on blockchain dot info. Yeah. 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 People, people were already saying they were like, "Ha ha ha!" I bet it's not even the government. I bet somebody hacked their dumbasses and yeah. and they're transferring the bitcoins to their own wallet. Uh, I mean, it's a possibility. Definitely, definitely. I mean, like, what would you have to do to hack it? Like, I, I know you can no you can idea. brute force you can brute force the private key if you have the right software. If you're good at hacking, and if your computer is powerful enough. You can just try and brute force their private key. Yeah, you can. Um, I mean, I'm not. I don't know anything about like about hacking or like you know. I'm I'm not a techie. Yeah. But um, you can. Uh, you can somehow get like a middleman program or virus or whatever uh, on on the computer, and if you uh, 
like when you do a transaction in Bitcoin, it sends the Bitcoin to a third party address and they essentially steal it. Oh. Um, but I don't think that could be possible in this scenario because um, unless unless the person who the winning bidder, unless they have that type of uh, that type of uh, virus on their computer, uh-huh. and it gets stolen when the government sends it to them. Oh, but, uh, I see. So, I so the virus has to be on the receiving address. So the attacker. You know, it could be. It could be on the sender too. But I don't see. I don't really see that happening with the uh, federal government because you know they. They have. I mean, I'm just assuming, but they're the government. They have to have like, like really great cybersecurity. So, yeah. And they're yeah. not and they're not like buying things with Bitcoin. They made, they've made like, two or three transactions so far. Like they seized them all, yeah. put them all in one wallet. Mm-hmm. Then they changed their wallets for whatever reason last week, and then um, they're going to be sending them to the the wallets of the winning bidders in ten days. So okay. there's not really much opportunity for a hacker to you know hack the federal government and install this kind of bot or whatever it is uh-huh. to steal the Bitcoin. So okay. I think. For that method to be used, it would have to be the the receiver would have to be compromised. So I don't know how likely that actually is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the main thing that that we might see is them making an error on their own part again, because clearly that's uh, that's a pretty big possibility. So yeah. I'm hoping that I win the lottery and they actually <laughs> send to my address. Maybe I should just spam like a bunch of my own Bitcoin addresses to the U.S. Marshal's office yeah, I'll, and hope I'll they do it by accident. I'll, I'll make like 50 new addresses and email them mine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or they could just like whatever kind of – they could just like spill their coffee on the computer and not have the wallet backed up. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> and dest- destroy 30,000 Bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> so – if that if that happened, um, I think that would be bullish news right there, because uh, then those coins are out of circulation forever, yeah, and they're not going to be dumped right on the market. There's no chance, and yeah, um, yeah. deflation, but more deflation. I actually, I think this, um, I think this accidental disclosure of the list could gives us some interesting insight on what could possibly happen to the price because of this auction, mm-hmm. because. Um, of the names that you listed off just a second ago, most of them were either executives at Bitcoin companies or executives at investment firms. Yes. So, and we know uh, this: the transactions between the federal government and the winning bidders, it's not happening through exchanges. It's going to be off the market. So the Bitcoins aren't going to flood the exchanges, so it won't depress the price that way. Yeah. But... So it depends on what the winning bidders do once they get the bitcoins. Yes. Um, and since a lot of these people are uh, like are executive members of uh, really big uh, bitcoin companies, and also executives of investment firms, it seems like um, they might be trying to get all of the bitcoins at one time. So it could be possible that all thirty thousand end up in the possession of one person. Yes. So it depends on what they do with it. Um, if they hold it and use it as an investment, uh, you know, waiting for it to go to the moon, it's not. It's obviously not going to make the price go down. It yeah. could. Uh, it could keep the price flat for the last couple of days. It's been uh, at like between like six hundred and six oh eight. Right now, it's at five ninety. Mm-hmm. So it can stay in that range until something happens to change that, or it can make it go up a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, just because, just out of excitement, um, but to me at least, it seems really unlikely that whoever uh, buys these coins are just gonna like dump them and spend them all on something outrageous. Yeah, yeah, that seems unlikely. Because why would like why would someone who just wants the cash? Why would they spend the cash in the first place? to buy the coins yeah. just to dump them, even if they're going to make some profit. Like it seems like too much of a hassle for most yeah, people. Cause the people who are actually going to be bidding on it, they've already put $200,000 into it. Um, plus whatever the bidding prices end up being for these blocks of 3000 bitcoins. Yeah. So, um, it doesn't really make sense 
for someone to spend all this uh, all this money to spend bitcoins. You know, they could they could have just spent the dollars and yeah. you know gotten the same stuff. So um, definitely, it it changes. It, it slightly changes the prediction I made last week, which so far has been right, by the way. Um, I said that for sure the auction would make the price go down, uh, but now it seems more likely that the price will stay flat or even increase a little bit. Huh. So huh. Um, my prediction last week was that um, after after the um, the sell-off stopped uh, because of the fear from ghash.io and the stuff going on in Iraq that I was hypothesizing about, um, I said that... Uh, the price would go back up to around 600 and it would stay there between the 580 and 600 range and it would possibly even go up a little bit until the um, auction. And so um, I just want to pat myself on the back because I've been right so far. <laughs> yeah, one week. One week of success. <laughs> I've got, and I've got 10 more days. I've uh-huh. got 10 more days and I'm going to say that the price is either going to stay flat or it's going to go up a little bit. Huh. I don't think it's I don't think it's likely that these uh, coins are going to be dumped on the uh, market or the exchanges. You don't think um, you don't think some some exchange traders are going to get some cold feet and think that it's going to go down and then that will cause them to sell in advance of the auction before it happens. Because like I agree, that the auction won't drive the price down, especially since we've got all these people who are um, probably buying just to personally hold it. Uh, they aren't going to just dump it. But uh, there's probably some traders out there who think that it will get dumped, right? And they're yeah, they're thinking um, that the market's going to be a bearish market for a while. That's a definite possibility, and it shouldn't be ruled out. Um, I think that the likelihood of that fear was reduced a lot since that uh, list of names got accidentally leaked. Yeah. Um, because now we know who these people are. We know that a lot of them are from investment firms and, and yeah. major Bitcoin companies. Yeah. And uh, so they're playing with a lot of money. And um, I think that increases the likelihood that uh, traders on the market are going to expect these coins to, to be hoarded instead of immediately dumped. Mm-hmm. But now, I think it would happen- have been different if we if one of the names on the list had been like Ben Bernanke, for instance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it leaked that he want he possibly wanted to buy up thirty thousand bitcoins, like that would be pretty big news because then like you would think that okay Ben Bernanke is probably gonna just dump them I guess like why would why would the Federal Reserve Chairman want bitcoins or some other some other like random just government uh, figure like just trying to buy them up and get rid of them or something, um, but yeah these people are gonna hold it they're gonna hold it yeah. it's gonna be good. But I mean uh, Bernanke was just trying to be. We'll just be trying to help us out, though. I mean, he he sees he sees that bitcoins are too um, are too valuable, which is obviously a result of underconsumption. So he would just buy them up and then dump them on the market to yeah. drive prices up a little bit. Yeah, help help the companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's <laughs> that's obviously not happening. There's there's actually not that many surprising names on this list. Um. Like no, yeah, there really isn't anyone from government. It's just a bunch of um, like major Bitcoin companies, capital management companies. Uh, there's a lawyer, you know. I, I mentioned the artist, a musician. Um, so yeah, you know, I, uh, one other thing that I noticed as well is um, this. This only happened a week after they announced the auction, and already, already there's forty, at least forty names who are interested in the auction right so i think that bodes well for the auction overall and and how many bidders that there probably will be there's going to be several different bidders on this and it's not just going to be like you know a couple people like bidding against each other and then the price stays pretty low and then they get like a ridiculously good deal on coins which um would actually incentivize them to at least sell some i bet to to make some profit yeah. But there's going to be a lot of bidders on this. I'm excited to see this happen. I hope that like, I hope there's a way that the media can like can cover this as it's happening and and you know, like right. see the bidding war in real time. And I'm interested to see what the bidding prices are actually going to be, because um, this is actually going to be a sealed bid, 
which means that um, everybody everybody gets one bid per block. I guess they can vote on every block of three thousand coins, and yeah. um, and so there's not going to be any like uh, any like battling. Uh, between the bidders, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. They're they're gonna make they're gonna make uh, a one time bid, uh, submit it through email, I'm guessing, and the U.S. Marshals are gonna open it up and give the coins to the highest bidder. So this could incentivize the people to make um, much higher bids than they normally would. So I think mm. we could definitely see the bidding, uh, the bids be much higher than the market price. Really? And huh? Because yeah. cause they want to get like a a big bulk of of coins at once. Yeah, because if these people if these people are competing for all of the bitcoins, um, they're you know they're going to be putting some pretty serious cash on the table. Yeah. And uh, and um, so if if they're willing to bid above the market price, they're obviously expecting it to go higher. You know, which further confirms the suspicions that uh that these people are going to hold it instead of dump it as soon as they get it yes yes and the the really cool thing about bitcoin that you know enables more possibilities in this situation is that let's say um let's say barry silbert wins like half of the uh, stoke road bitcoins like five blocks or whatever that's fifteen thousand bitcoins What's cool is he can decide after that if he wants to keep half of that stash for himself and just hoard it, hold it until we go to the moon. And then he can just take the other half and maybe, um, you know, put it put it into second market, provide more um, uh, more funds for the overall market or just or just do whatever with it and create a second business if he wants. You know, like he can move that money anywhere and like there, there's no like. There's no hard line between personal use and business use. A lot of the times, right. you're you're you're, if you have like that much money to play around with, you're gonna put it in multiple, many different places. Like he might, who knows? He might go on Havelock Investments, and you know, buy stock in a bunch of different like cryptocurrency companies with you know a few of those thousand bitcoins that he got. So, yeah, like it's it's really interesting to see what these guys do with these coins and if 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 they don't i'm sure the u.s marshall surface doesn't know how to use coin join or any mixing services yeah. I, I seriously doubt that so we're going to be able to see these coins move from the u.s marshall's office to the winning bidder and then if the winning bidder doesn't mix the coins we can still watch them from there and see what they do with it so i'm yeah. i'm pretty excited to see what happens it's with definitely this gonna be exciting and um i'm gonna be paying attention to it it's 10 days away so it's coming up pretty fast yeah yeah end of june right is it june 27th or 28th i thought it was 29th but you know it could actually be the 27th oh okay okay either way end of june yeah and uh (laughs) we'll we'll find out who who wins this epic auction of of dirty coins dirty coins you know and then what? we can see what happens from there hopefully it'll be good things 